You're planning on traveling to Iceland. Well, I went on an epic nine day adventure in Iceland and in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know to plan your own trip to Iceland. Let's go. How do you get to Iceland? You're gonna to wanna to fly into Reykjavik Airport. I was able to get a direct flight from Washington Dulles Airport directly to Reykjavik and it was absolutely perfect. How do you get around in Iceland? I would recommend renting a rental car or a camper van depending on the time of year that you're going. I personally rented a car from Lava Car Rental. This was a great experience. They picked us up right from the airport and took us to the rental car facility, which was like five minutes from the airport. We were able to pick up the four x four car and be on our way for the adventure. Be sure to check the time of year that you're going and the road conditions during that time of year because some of the roads like the highlands and those regions can be closed during the winter months and so it's really important that you don't get a camper van that can, can't drive up there during those months. That's really really important. If you do get a camper van, be sure to check and book campgrounds ahead of time. Hot tip for traveling around Iceland, be sure to save and download Google Maps offline maps. This is my biggest hack to traveling that I always make sure to do before I go to a trip, save the region that you're going to on Google Maps and download the offline map and also save flags and pins from your research of the places that you find and hear about that you want to go to. This will be really, really helpful for you when you get to your destination in case you don't have cell service. Then you can check where those spots were and you can still navigate to your next location. How long should you stay? I recommend 10 days. Iceland is a massive country and adventure lovers paradise, but 10 days will be an adequate amount of time to have a lot of epic adventures but still fit in with a corporate PTO schedule where you can take a week off and include two weekends. So that's what I would recommend. What time of year should you visit? I personally plan my trip to Iceland for where summer transitioned to winter. And so it was the end of October, early November. Pros and cons to going in each season and I'll share those further in depth in the next section. But that's something really important to note. Something also important to note is the sunrise and sunset times for the time of year that you're planning to visit. Summer months can get midnight sun, so it's like absolutely no darkness. And then in the winter months, there can be a lot of darkness. When I went, it was sunrise around 9 a.m. and sunset around 5 p.m. And so that's really important to keep in mind too for how, what adventures that you want to do and how much driving you need between each of your adventures to make sure that you're not gonna be seeing a place in the dark because that might not be fun unless you wanna see the stars or the northern lights. <laughs> So here are the pros and cons of visiting Iceland in October. This is when I went and this is what I can personally share with you. The pros, ice caves and snowmobiling tours, a chance at seeing the Northern Lights. Most of the summer tours are still running. There are fewer crowds. You get off season, which means more affordable travel prices. Sunrise isn't until 9 a.m., which is great if you wanna wake up later, sleep in a little bit and then go shoot or observe sunrise or drive to somewhere to see sunrise and get that beautiful light. Golden hour is golden hours, which is really, really cool. Iceland festivals, the hot springs feel extra amazing when it's colder out. And then you also have a chance at seeing the fall colors. Fall colors are really tricky to time in Iceland because the weather is so extreme and harsh there. It is a very fast window and the wind could come and knock it all down within a day, but there is a chance at seeing them. These are the cons. Another con of the daylight is the shorter daytime. And so you have approximately nine hours of daylight. The colder temperatures and the unpredictable weather, like you could literally get wind, rain, snow all in a day, although that's that's all year. <laughs> Iceland weather is wild and the highlands are closed and so that's a really beautiful region of Iceland but they're closed in the winter months. So the pros of visiting in summer would be that you have 24 hours of daylight and warmer temperatures. It's less crowded in the shoulder seasons like April, May, and September and October. So that's something to keep in mind if you want less crowds then plan for those shoulder of summer seasons. But yeah, definitely pros and cons to visiting in each season. Iceland is amazing all year round for different things. What should you pack? Layers. There's a famous saying that they say in Iceland is if you don't like the weather in Iceland, just wait five minutes and it will change. Just be prepared for everything. We experienced every wind weather condition when we were there. Even at one point the roads were closed because the wind was so extreme, it was pushing cars 
off of the road and pushing boulders into the road and so just be prepared for every weather condition make sure to have and be aware of like weather news alerts do you want to make sure you prioritize your safety when you're adventuring in Iceland as well a lot of layers I have a video I will link here on packing for a winter adventure another thing that's really important to pack is your micro spikes so for hiking in the ice and snow it's really helpful to have the spikes on your boot for traction against slipping and then I would recommend a swimsuit for the hot springs your passport power dock and cords and then also plenty of snacks okay so where do I recommend you go I have so many spots that I recommend in Iceland I have them all written out here on my phone I also have a full Iceland adventure travel vlog that I will link right here for you that has all of these spots further in depth but I'm gonna list them all and do my best to pronounce them correctly for you here so that you can note them and be sure to check out my other video for more in depth of each of these spots. What I recommend doing is doing a ring road road trip clockwise. That was personally the direction that we chose to go and we really like the adventures in that direction. But again, you can tailor it to the amount of time that you have and where you decide you wanna go. I started off the road trip by visiting the Blue Lagoon. This is a beautiful lagoon. You can get face masks and relax. It was an absolutely amazing way to like fight off jet lag and feel like oh, I've arrived in Iceland. Next, uh, I stayed at the Keflavik Igloo. This is a sky sighting igloo house on Airbnb. I had the best success with planning my trip for the road trip of booking Airbnbs and places off of booking.com along the way. I would always recommend that for a trip to Iceland if you're not camping and you want accommodations. I really loved having a warm room and a hot shower to go back to after a day of being freezing <laughs> while adventuring Iceland. Then I would recommend Godafoss my Vatten Nature Baths, VT Crater, Detifoss, Stuagodil Canyon on the east side parking lot, Littelanis Foss, Henji Foss, the Pack House Restaurant, Hofn, Vestrahorn Stockness, Diamond Beach, Mola Jigufur Canyon, Rainis Fahara Black Sand Beach, School Beans Cafe was really cute and quirky, Vic, Kuvernafoss, Skogafoss, Seljan Lesfoss, Local guide of Vatna Jokul, doing a full day ice trekking and cave adventure with them was so epic. Smiohan Brughaus, Golden Circle Geyser, it's fun to road trip around that circle. Snowmobiling tour on Landjokul Glacier with Get Your Guide. Golfos, Kirkjufo, Snaefnesnels Peninsula. A chance at seeing the Northern Lights. So for the Northern Lights, I would recommend downloading the Aurora Forecast app. Again, seeing the Northern Lights is complete chance, but the longer you're there, the more you maximize your ability and opportunity to see the Northern Lights. You'll be able to check the opportunity on this app. And of course, the more darkness there is, the more opportunity you have to see the Northern Lights, which is why they say the chance at seeing them is higher in the winter, but it is always a chance. And it's just an absolute magical blessing when you do see them. It's like Nature is already art, but to see these green lights dancing in the sky is just my heart like stopped and burst with excitement the first time I saw it and I hope that when you go to Iceland you have the chance to see them as well. Next are in Astapi, Snæfnes Jökull National Park, Reykjavik is where you're going to fly in and out of or nearby and then the Sky Lagoon. I loved ending the trip at the Sky Lagoon, starting the trip at the Blue Lagoon and ending it at the Sky Lagoon. They're both different lagoons in Iceland but it was so amazing to start and end the trip that way. Just relaxation and rejuvenation after all the extreme weather and adventures and everything Thing. it was the absolute best so like I said with where to stay during this trip I would recommend booking Airbnbs depending on where you want to go during your road trip so depending on how much time that you have I would open up Google Maps and then map out each point that you want to go to and also take into account the daylight that you have available in the day and then book an Airbnb that is near or around that location also keep in mind for the time of year that you're going for example if you want to go to Salange Foss waterfall first thing in the morning then I would book an Airbnb really close to there. That's the approach that I took for this Ring Road road trip and I thought it was an awesome approach. Up next, what foods do I recommend you try in Iceland? So I'll be honest, if you've watched my Italy videos, you've heard me rave about Italian food. I'm always gonna be honest in my reviews. The Icelandic food didn't really blow me away. The most typical food to try in Iceland is seafood and lamb. Their lamb is popular and I did love that. That was really, really good. But honestly, there was nothing else from the Icelandic food that really stuck out to me. 
as with many of those icy countries, as I call them, it's a lot more of like, the land obviously isn't bountiful, so it isn't like picking fresh fruits and berries, but their yogurt was also really, really great. I recommend going for groceries in Reykjavik when you first land, picking up groceries. They have a Costco there, and then you can adventure from there and just have things like apples and bananas and fruits. A lot of people also rave about the Icelandic hot dogs, but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think they were crazy. I also don't really like processed food, but yeah, I don't wanna end this on a negative note. That's just my honest review. Overall, Iceland was such an epic adventure. I absolutely loved road tripping around Iceland. It is an adventure and nature lover's paradise. No trip to Iceland will ever be the same because the conditions and the life force and the energy of Iceland is ever changing. I hope you have an absolutely incredible adventure to Iceland. My name is Monica Furi across all social platforms. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you're looking forward to most for your trip to Iceland, and if you have any questions, and I hope you have an amazing adventure, and here's to living your most extraordinary life. See you in the next one.